Until you look close at the macro world, you might miss some of the most beautiful creatures you'll ever see. My name is Rick Leader. I'm a professional photographer based in Michigan. In this Tamron Tipcast, I'll share some of the things I've learned over the years shooting macro subjects. What I like about macro photography is the challenge. I like to challenge myself doing something difficult, maybe something that no one's ever done before or seen. I can spend a lot of time, hours, chasing a small subject that's uncooperative under lighting conditions that are very difficult. Most of the time it doesn't work. When it does work, it's a great feeling. In order to get a life-size image of a small subject, you need to use a true macro lens. I use a Tamron 90 and 180 millimeter lenses. The closer you get to a subject, the smaller your depth of field, and in some cases you might have even less than a millimeter in focus. The really important thing is to keep steady, and the only way you're going to be able to do that at that level of magnification is to use a tripod. Even shooting with a tripod can be a real challenge. No, it's gone. Just had a really nice Katie did posing, and I went to adjust my camera and it hopped away. Sometimes the tripod legs are knocking into the grass that's holding your subject, in which case you've ruined your picture. Using a tripod can slow you down enough to pay more attention to composition and lighting, and spending that time will always result in better images. I'm almost always using a tripod, but under some conditions I can't. In those cases, it's really nice to have Tamron's 90mm macro with vibration compensation. It gives me just enough of an edge to get a sharp image when I'm hand-holding. I'm going to try to get a lower angle, get under it, and shoot up, and I think that'll work better. The kind of tripod I like gets me as close to the ground as possible, which brings me to my next tip, which is to get at the level of your subject. And with macro, that usually means as low as you can get. From above, you have almost no background options. You're photographing the ground, and usually that's boring. If you get on the same level as the insect, you've got 360 degrees to move around, and you never know what you're going to find. It's going to make a great background or a clearer background. For me, the background is one of the most important parts of the image. I usually don't even take a picture unless I think I've got a good background. Often, if the background isn't working well, the insect will move on its own, usually to a better position. If not, I just keep waiting until it does. Even on a day like today, where the lighting wasn't ideal, it was mostly cloudy and even rainy, I was still looking for dramatic contrast. In the case of the slug, because it was so wet, it reflected a lot of light, and that in contrast with the dark background of the stump made for a more dramatic image. The most important thing for me is to avoid flat lighting. I'm usually trying to use side lighting, even back lighting, to set off the subject and make it more dramatic. Sometimes if the subject is translucent, using a backlight will make the subject almost glow. With macro photography, you're so close to your subject that your area of focus is often just a sliver. No camera's autofocus can read your mind where you want the focus to be. So what I do is set the focus manually, move my body back and forth until the subject is sharp. Many days I've spent hours searching for the right subject or the right lighting and come up with nothing. You can't rush your way through macro photography. Macro photography is a skill you develop and you develop it with patience. Try out some of these tips the next time you see a great macro subject and visit the Tamron website for more Tamron tip casts.